and you still have a chance to win big after no one won the Powerball jackpot Monday night. We'll look at how big the grand prize stands now. Plus, respiratory illness is affecting thousands of kids all across the United States. However, doctors say we could have a vaccine for it soon. Almost time to play ball. The Houston Astros are in Philly tonight for game three of the World Series. It was rained out last night in Philadelphia. We had rain around here last night. Live cam right now. Let's go out there and see how things are looking. We still have some storms in our metro area, and Justin Horn will show us where there are coming up because it's still raining buckets out there. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Sure does. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, first day of November. Sarah, I'm glad you're here this morning. I'm al always a pleasure to be here. Happy Dia los Muertos, or Day of the Dead. Um, but all also, Saints Day. All Saints Day. Yeah. Also kicks off. No, no shave, shave November. November. And for some of us, we've been not shaving since we shaved Friday morning, but that's besides the point. Yeah, you know, you got a head start. Max Massey's a little upset. You know, he didn't get the memo. To Max, get that. are you the only one that didn't start <laughs> early? It was almost no shave November. It's a yes. sore subject mm, in uh, the newsroom. It's a new thing, Max. Well, you know, co-captain Justin Horn really uh, weighing the scales down a little bit over here. Wow. <laughs> You were alerted. <laughs> you were alerted. Uh, yeah, I told you on Teams, Justin. I sit four feet from you. Uh, yes, I'm. I'm sorry, Max. But By the way, guys, is, is Max still upset about this? So we're clear. We're all in the communications business, okay? We are. Okay. Uh, Max, your beard looks great, by the way. Thank, thank you. I don't think it constitutes a beard. It's been four hours, but thank you, Justin. We're good there. We're excited about no shave, by the way. Uh, we do need to look at the radar, though. There are some showers and storms out there. You can see those uh, still there from Beeville to Victoria. There's some pockets of heavy rain mixed in there. If you, if you heard some thunder overnight, that's because we did get some thunderstorms here around San Antonio. But I'll tell you, the rain totals weren't great. Here around town, only picked up about two hundredths of an inch officially at the airport. But still some rain coming down, as I said, in Beeville and Victoria. Uh, this is where you could pick up maybe another quarter of an inch, a uh, tenth of an inch, probably more uh, more on that level with this kind of rain. But uh, this is going to be moving off to the north and east, and eventually a lot of this is going to move out this afternoon. A little closer look there at Floresville, still some light showers moving through your neck of the woods. Same for Poteet and Pleasanton. But here in San Antonio, it's dry. We do not have any rain at the moment, and I don't think that uh, these showers really work their way back in. Temperature wise, 62 degrees at the airport, 63 Hondo, 60 in Kennedy, 63 in Victoria. Still some 50s up around New Braunfels and Austin and around San Antonio. Mostly 60s right now with some of those clouds hanging on. So, case that 12 hour forecast will keep in a small chance for rain through the noon hour. Then, after that, partly to mostly cloudy skies. We top out at 72 this afternoon with southeast Julie winds. 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll take a look at those rainfall totals and get you set for our next chance of rain, which arrives late on Friday. That's coming up in a few, but let's get over to RJ now with a look at your morning traffic. Yeah, Justin, things definitely picking up here as uh, people make their way out there. It's got a little busy out there. I want to show you our TransGuide traffic cameras here. This is the camera at I-10 at Callahan. Basically, this is where 410 intersects with I-10 westbound. So as we take a closer look at our maps, there was a major crash that was reported there earlier. I was looking at the cameras and crews have kind of cleared out most of that scene. But as you can see, there's still some pretty good traffic buildup there on 410 in those westbound lanes as you get onto I-10. So this is something that we've been continuing to follow, but it looks like crews have mostly cleared up this scene based on those cameras. So a little bit further west, I-10 westbound at Hebner Road. This is also causing a bit of an issue this morning for commuters headed out west. Um, again, this is I-10 westbound at Hebner Road, just a reported stall in that area as we get kind of a bird's eye view now of everything going on across our city, mostly there. Again, just I-10 west, northwest side. There's been a little bit of an issue here at uh, 410 and Culebra Road, but that's been mostly cleared up throughout the morning as we go back out to our TransGuide traffic cameras. And I just want to show you real quick this one out there at, uh, let's see, if we could find it. It is, yeah, I-10 and Hebner, so that has actually been cleared up as well. So crews doing a good job clearing out many of these incidences and accidents that we've had so far this morning. Mark and Sarah, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. To some quick stories we've been following overnight, San Antonio police have arrested a woman who they say was mishandling a gun at a Halloween party, causing it to fire and wound an 18-month-old baby. 
33-year-old Eloisa Fraga is charged with aggravated assault for the incident on Sunday night. An arrest affidavit says the 18-month-old boy was unconscious and suffering from a chest wound when he was taken to the hospital by his parents. Police say the child was hit by a bullet that went through a cell phone he was holding. Fraga apparently left the scene after the shooting and officers were not able to find her at the time. Police also trying to find the person that slammed into the back of a person driving a Corvette and kept going. Happened around 9 last night on Loop 410 near Eisenhower on the northeast side. The first crash resulted in a second one. Police say the Corvette stalled out only to be hit from behind by another driver who kept going. Investigators say a truck then tried to avoid the Corvette but overcorrected and flipped. The Corvette's driver was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. No details are available on who was in the truck. Any more headlines of midterm elections just one week away with the control of Congress up for grabs. The economy and gas prices are in the spotlight along with threats against election workers and even politicians and their families. Max Massey joins us now live in the studio with a breakdown of those stories and much more. Mr. Massey, good morning. Good morning, guys. If you've seen the press conferences recently, if you go on to Twitter, you've seen the president's Twitter account. You know, right now he's really trying to hammer home the idea of gas prices are too high, but he's really trying to blame the gas companies, all the oil companies. So President Biden starting this week off, yes, the week before midterms, trying to blast the oil companies for their profits. He's blaming our high gas prices that we see at the pump on profiteering. Now, the president presenting somewhat of an ultimatum to these gas and oil companies. He's saying ramp up production or pay a higher tax rate. President Biden threatening to impose a higher tax on excess profits and other restrictions if these companies don't increase production and refining cap uh, capacity, trying to drive down the prices that we see at the pump. So just to look at some of the numbers, Exxon says last week they had their highest earnings ever for their third quarter, a net income of more than 19 billion. Chevron making 11 billion and Shell making almost 10 billion. Rather than increasing their investments in America or giving American consumers a break, their excess profits are going back to their shareholders and they're buying back their stocks so the executive pays are going to skyrocket. Just to put into perspective, the week that President Biden took office in January of 2020, the Energy Information Agency, a government organization, they report that gas was on average 2.57 a gallon. Today, across the country, it is 374 a gallon. Little, you know, napkin math. That is a 45% increase since January of 2020. And according to a new ABC and Ipsos poll, nearly half of Americans say either the economy or inflation are the most important issues for the midterms. Well, now to San Francisco. The man accused of attacking House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband with a hammer last week. Well, he is expected to be arraigned in San Francisco Superior Court later this morning. 42-year-old David DePap from Richmond, California. He is facing a number of state charges. Those include attempted murder, residential burglary, and assault with a deadly weapon, as well as federal charges. Assault, attempted kidnapping. Now, state prosecutors, they are expected to ask for DePap to be held without bail, according to the federal complaint. Papp allegedly used a hammer breaking into the Pelosi home in the upscale Pacific Heights neighborhood of San Francisco early Friday, just around 2 a.m. It appears as though this was based on his statements um, and comments that were made in that house during his encounter with Mr. Pelosi that this was politically motivated. And the criminal complaint is very telling. So while being questioned by police, DePap stated that he was planning to hold Nancy Pelosi hostage talk to her and that he wanted to use her to lure another unnamed individual. Now, he also said if she were to tell the truth, DePap would have told police he would let the speaker go. But if she lied, DePap said he was going to break her kneecaps. All of this according to the criminal complaint. Now, he also told police that he viewed Nancy Pelosi as the leader of the pack of lies told by the Democratic Party and that he was certain she would not have told the truth. All right, now to a story that we've told you locally about hospitals and how this is a very severe season for RSV. If you're a parent, you've probably read the articles and you might have seen it in your kids. It is one of the worst seasons doctors say they can remember, but there might be some good news on the horizon. We could have an RSV vaccine by next fall. Four vaccines could be nearing review by the FDA. More than a dozen others are now being tested. A long-acting injection designed to be given right after birth, also in the works. In a recent clinical trial, it was 75% effective at heading off RSV infections that needed medical attention. Great news considering RSV actually the leading cause of infant hospitalizations across the country 
even before this year's surge. It infects the lower lungs, it causes a bad cough, and it could lead to severe complications. It could lead to pneumonia and even inf inflammation. Now, tens of millions of kids around the world, they get RSV every year, and seniors can get it too. But here's the thing, guys. The last therapy that was approved, that was way back in 1998. All right, so here's some good news or bad news, depending on your perspective. No big treats from the Powerball last night. None of the tickets sold matched all six numbers, so the jackpot is going to get only bigger. But there's some good news for you know, some Texas resident out there. The Texas Lottery reported a $1 million second prize ticket was sold in at Cedar Park and in Houston. Uh, the lottery says Texans as a whole spent more than $16 million in Powerball sales yesterday alone, but no matches for all six numbers. And that means the next drawing tomorrow night, guys, that's going to be $1.2 billion. Uh, the new jackpot is going to be the fourth largest in U.S. history. The largest was $1.586 billion, and that was won by three ticket holders in 2016. Massive lottery jackpots, they've become more common in recent years since lotto officials have adjusted game rules and ticket prices have pumped up the top prize. I saw I even got Justin Horn's attention when I said $1.2 billion. Okay, but you're still not going to play. Yeah, I'm not going to play. You can't win if you don't play, Max. Do you play? Uh, you know I play. Do you, have you won the jackpot? No, but okay. I've won, I've won, so a, solid, like... I've won a solid uh, $9. Okay, yeah. so you think you're in the positive or the negative? Oh, always in the positive. Okay, Yeah. I meant the numbers, not your perspective. <laughs> Mark, do you play? I did play okay. uh, for this last drawing, but uh, I, uh, for, for, was it Saturday night? Yeah. Yeah, but I, need, I didn't play last night. I need to get my tickets for the next one, which yes. is tomorrow night. Wednesday. There you go. Tomorrow's Wednesday, yes. yes. Good luck, guys. <laughs> Max, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Well, back to local news now. New details continue to develop in the shooting case of Eric Cantu. His family responding after KSAT investigates reviewed new records in the case. San Antonio Police Department show Cantu evaded, now fired, police officer James Brennan the night before uh, that Cantu was shot for the, by the very same officer in a McDonald's parking lot. According to those records, Cantu's girlfriend was also in the car both nights. She told police Cantu sped away from police near 281 and Bitters the night before he was shot. It's not clear what police were pulling him over for. Cantu's parents have said the car was not stolen and remain focused on their son's recovery. They questioned statements made in those documents, but said if it is true, no action justifies the officer shooting Eric. Meanwhile, it's been a year since Alana Casaneda was shot in the face by a carjacker at the Alamo Quarry Market. And since then, she's fought not only to recover physically, but emotionally and mentally. That was the hardest battle. That was the hardest thing I've ever been through in my life, was just coming in and out of it. Kids do not need to be out here ruining people's lives and taking innocent lives away from families and friends. It's not okay. Last November, police say then 18-year-old Julio Cesar Rivera was sh shot Castaneda in the face outside of the Whole Foods, all because he wanted her car. He is still awaiting trial. Castaneda was touched by what happened in Uvalde on May 24th and says she made the journey there to offer support, knowing how it feels to be impacted by gun violence. This is the final week of early voting, and the polls will be open two hours later this week. So polls will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day through Friday. There are several locations around the city where you can vote. You can find those polling spots on KSAT.com. Early voting ends Friday. Election Day is uh, next Tuesday. So far, over 192,000 people have cast votes here in Bear County. Right now, 9-11, 62 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Well, you've probably seen lots of butterflies fly, fluttering around in your yards and around the San Antonio area, but what kind of butterflies are they? We'll tell you how to identify some of the ones you're seeing. Welcome back, 915. You may be noticing a lot of butterflies fluttering around San Antonio or in your yard. Okay, but not every orange butterfly is a monarch. There are actually several types of native butterflies that are the same color. And I spoke with the director of the National Butterfly Center, which is in Mission, Texas, in the Rio Grande Valley, about how to identify different types of butterflies you're seeing in your area. Okay. Let's, let's watch your story. 
Right okay. here. Right here, right, right here. here. So this yeah. is my yard. This is this is my front garden, and I have about 100 to 50 residential queen butterflies that live there all the time. But she took us through the different list. So that what you're seeing on your, your screen, that's a queen butterfly. On the right. And that's a monarch, and you see the difference Very is... Very subtle difference. Yes, but it, this picture doesn't really do it justice. The queen has more of a burnt orange okay. color, and the monarch is more of a jack-o'-lantern brighter orange. I do see that. Orange. The, the queen is more subdued orange. Right, and then the monarch has those markings, that, like those clear stained glass window kind of markings on Ooh, good their description. Wings. Yeah, and then the queen doesn't have that on the back of their wings. They don't have those markings. This is another one. So the outside of their wings are actually orange. This is gulf fritillary. This is the inside. They have these beautiful silver like elongated spots and they're also orange. Took this in my garden. Um, it's coming you're out so of excited you're out of breath. I know, I'm just like overwhelmed. This is what they look like. This is what the back of their wings look like. Really? Yes, you wouldn't be able to tell, but those are gulf fritillaries, and some people often mistake them as monarchs. No, they're, they're a different type of butterfly, very common here in South Texas. Now, these are the showstoppers, swallowtails. These are, this is the giant swallowtail that you're seeing. It has that yellow stripe across right. with black, but there's kind different. Kind of like our, the new Brahma's logo, right? Yes, that's yeah. how you can, and these are, these are like almost bat-like, they're so big. What the heck is that? And that's another swallowtail, it's a pipe vine swallowtail. Um, so swallowtails have diff several different types. Uh, beautiful. Just different color. They're just striking, they literally, my, it just stops time when I see them. And these were all taken in my garden, and wow. it's just, it feels magical when you're out there, and that's uh, kind of, the reward when you plant native, like that's Greg's Miss Flower. Um, it's, I say it's always a sugar high after they are eating the Greg's Miss Flower, the butterflies do zoomies because they're just oh, oh. so excited. Wow, okay, cool. But okay, it's a great way to, great thing to do with your kids and identifying them and I going love that you're them. so into this. Yes, and you got, <laughs> and all her stuff's on ksat.com. Absolutely. All right, Justin's back now. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you were talking about, rainfall totals, I also saw your updated pollen count. Yes. And we're not seeing the thing that begins with M yet. Well, no, that's not true. You're reporting mold. Yeah. But not the other in the word. Cedar. Yes. So we're good there. Molds are higher today, thanks yeah. to the rain. And by the way, the butterfly stuff, I'm waiting for David Attenborough to really do some <laughs> comments. I know, right? <laughs> Narrated. Some people will have to Google David Attenborough, but that's okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yes, we did get some rain, guys. And you're right, this uh, caused mold to spike. And we're uh, seeing mold numbers in the high category. And I'll show that to you in just a second. But let's look at the observed rainfall. It wasn't a lot. But we did get some lightning and thunder overnight. It was loud here around San Antonio, two hundredths of an inch. Rock Springs about half an inch. So that's one of the better numbers. You're going to find the best rainfall totals down here closer to the coast. So Beaver over to Victoria, where we've picked up nearly an inch now, and that number is still going up. But still some rain falling in those areas. A little closer look at Bear County. Stone Oak about three tenths of an inch, Stinson about three tenths of an inch. Those were the two biggest numbers I saw here locally around San Antonio. Most of us about a tenth of an inch to two tenths of an inch. That was it. And again, the airport, not great. Not what we're hoping for. You look at the rainfall for, well, since September 1st, 2.03, not a good number. Since January 1st, 9.25, we still haven't even made it to double digits yet. And we're nearly 20 inches below average. And if you're keeping track at home, it's still the driest year on record so far. We're at 9.25. In 1917, we were at 9.36 at this point. So just a little bit behind 1917. And you see the rest of the years there. Those were some very, very dry years. 2022 is shaping up to be exactly that. Now, there are some more rain chances headed our way. But that doesn't arrive until Friday night. So quick check of the live radar here. A few showers trying to skirt southeastern parts of Bear County there. Uh, but uh, these are very, very light showers. So Floresville, Pleasanton over to Poth and Falls City. Some light showers there. You'll run into the heavier rain. Bevo over to Victoria, as I said. And this swath of rain will continue to push east and get out of here as we get into the afternoon. So right now we're looking at 62 and mostly cloudy. Dew point is at 57. And most of us are in the 60s and 50s at this point. Off and on cloud cover will probably keep temperatures in check today. So we're thinking 70s for highs. And you see some of the cloud cover that's still around here in Bear County with a few of those showers down around Forestville. So the future cast, 
by midday takes the rain starts to take the rain away and by 4 p.m. it's moving out. Clouds are trying to drift out too, but as we get into tomorrow morning, clouds build back in and tomorrow is going to be a partly cloudy to mostly cloudy day. More moisture surging in here. It's going to be a little more gray and then here comes our next storm system. This arrives Friday night and it's along this front and we think this will be maybe around 10 o'clock or so. The timing is going to be changing a little bit as we get closer, but that's kind of the idea. We'll get a broken line of showers and storms. Some of these though could be strong and then we get some windy weather behind the front. And that uh, that is how the, the weekend is shaping up sort of breezy and cooler 76 on Saturday 80 on Sunday. But in the meantime, quite a bit of cloud cover next few days. We'll put in some small rain chances Thursday, Friday, but it's Friday night into Saturday morning where we have our best opportunity for showers and storms. We're going to go over to RJ now. Yeah, Justin, we have a uh, developing situation on the far north side. This is at Stono Parkway above 1604. And what we're hearing right now is that there is a reported gas leak in this area at Stono Parkway at Vineyards and Arrow Stone. So this is going to be on the west side of Stono Parkway in this neighborhood right there. So again, Arrow Stone area, Vineyards area, Vineyards Drive, and you can see it intersects with Knights Cross. So I'd like to kind of take a wider view here. Uh, so far, traffic being slowed down a little bit as official are on this scene. We are actually sending a crew out there as well. So right now what we're hearing is that a construction crew uh, potentially hit a, a gas main there and that's what's causing uh, this uh, gas leak in this area. So just be prepared for slowdowns in this area. Be prepared for Stone Oak Parkway to potentially be shut down in both directions and also make sure to follow the latest alerts when it comes to any sort of evacuation process. But again, we have a crew headed to the scene and we will continue to update you guys as we get more information. Again, Gas Leak, Stone Oak Parkway at Vineyards and Aerostone. Just be very cautious if you are in that area. Mark and Sarah. Thank you for keeping us updated, RJ. 922 at 62 degrees. Get your phones ready to scan a QR code. After the break, we're kicking off No Shave November. We'll tell you what you can do to help starting today. Things are about to get a little hairy over here at KSAT. Today, we're kicking off No Shave November. All for a great cause. Team KSAT will be joining in the fundraising efforts across the country to help people impacted by cancer. Uh, here's a look at the guys taking part this year. Joining from all parts of the KSAT newsroom, we have anchors, reporters, meteorologists, photojournalists, each one with their own reason for participating in this wonderful cause. Uh, right now, you can learn more on our website. Click on this QR code. And it'll take you right to the web store and you can learn more about how you can donate. The goal for this year's Teen Case Hat is to raise $20,000, which sounds like a lot of money, and it is. But we've got the whole month, and with your help, uh, generous hearts, open wallets, we can make this happen. What was the group total last year? Do you guys remember? I don't recall. Justin, do you remember our total last year? It was to, to, to 20000 I think to that's 20? why this yeah. year's the goal is, is twenty. And didn't y'all come in, like, first across the country or second Finish. second across the country yeah first uh, first place at the very end and then at the last moment we got passed so I think it was like, last... by, it was like by two thousand dollars yeah so uh, we'll see how it goes this year 927 63 degrees more ahead on GMSA at nine all right we're expecting to hear from the accuser in the Josh Primo scandal later this later this week so Max Massey and RJ Marquez will be back in studio to break it all down in just a few minutes and could the missions get a new stadium downtown? Why one group says that is not a pipe dream. All right, welcome back. Uh, if you were trick or treating last night, I, I saw a lot of great costumes as I was out and about. And I want to show you one that we got here on our KSAC Connect. Another good one. The kids dressing up. This is uh, out of Seguin, I believe. And that is the Grinch and Max or Moose. Uh, love it. That's a great costume. Very well done. Uh, you get you get the pet and the kid there, which uh, we appreciate. Uh, a lot of great photos again on our KSAT Connect. You can always send those in on our KSAT app, or KSAT weather app, I should say. You can do that there at the bottom. Uh, let's look at the radar real quick. We've got some showers and storms still working their way across the coastal plains this morning. Not here in San Antonio, so the rain has moved out. Can't roll out a light shower here over the next couple of hours, but most of the, the rain, the bulk of the rain is going to be Beeville to Victoria, and that's where the rain is still coming down at this hour. And then some heavier pockets starting to move up towards the Houston area. We mentioned the pollen count earlier. Molds are high now, 1,570. They jumped way up because of rain overnight. And our case had 12 hour forecast, mostly cloudy this morning. Small, small chance of a light shower this morning. 
Then we see partly to mostly cloudy skies as we head into the afternoon. Temperatures top out around 72 today and then partly cloudy this evening with temperatures falling into the 60s. All right, let's go back over to RJ with some breaking news. Yeah, just in developing situation here on the far north side. This is above 1604 at Stone Oak Parkway. We have a reported gas leak. This is from uh, the San Antonio Fire Department. Stone Oak Parkway at Vineyards and Arrow Stone. That's the way that this is being reported right now. And we now have confirmed that both directions of Stone Oak Parkway are shut down for the moment. Now crews, uh, fire crews and hazmat crews are both on the scene there as we've been told that there was a construction crew that hit a gas main. So, so far, no, uh, no mandatory evacuations, but people are being told to s avoid the area if possible. And we're going to get a quick wider view here. Again, Stone Oak Parkway, uh, just above nice, uh, Knights Cross Drive. And again, this is the far north side where there is a reported gas leak in this area. Again, crews are trying to take care of this situation right now. No mandatory evacuations, but Stone Oak Parkway is now officially closed in both directions. So again, just kind of of, uh, be cautious if you're in this area or just kind of avoid this area altogether if possible. Guys, back to you. RJ, thank you. It's been a busy week in sports. Pro football has returned to San Antonio and the World Series gets going tonight on the East Coast. Max is back along with RJ to break everything down on this Tuesday morning. <laughs> Quick walk. Uh, yeah, RJ, <laughs> Mr. Uh, utility player over I here, guess, do it yeah, all from the breaking here. news to He's doing I guess everything traffic. but starting pitcher for the Astros tonight. Uh, well, <laughs> that's it. Give it time. He's still working on the arm. I know. Right, but, okay. It warmed up a little uh, bit. Speaking of, uh, he got a night off at least. Yeah, that's right, true. So that's Philly true. fans had to wait 13 years to host mm. a World Series game. And, well, they had to wait just another one after the Game 3 of the World Series postponed last night due to some pretty bad weather. All right, so, yeah, this was pretty this interesting. Guy. This there hour, I know, poor guy, <laughs> poor guy made it out there. Uh, came about an hour before first pitch there as the Astros pitchers were already getting ready to go in the outfield before the tarp came on. You know that's never a good sign when the tarp gets going there. And uh, this series is tied at one game apiece right now. Tonight's Game 3 officially, hopefully, is set for 7 0 So uh, it's, it's funny because I think Minute Maid has a movable <laughs> yeah, roof, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's, uh, you know, seeing people from Philadelphia being like, it's just the weirdest, <laughs> biggest blanket we ever have encountered. But you know what? Right. Tonight, Expectation? Do you have an expectation? What are you thinking? I Taking think one the, on the road? I think the Strohs are focused again after losing that first game, You losing that first big lead. But I think Astros. Be okay there. Okay. I, Go Strohs. I we'll see. Skeptical. Look, I think the I think the Strohs got away with one because I think mm. Halloween in Philadelphia, mm. first World Series game in 13 okay. years. Says Good the man from Philadelphia. Yeah. I'm just saying, I think the crowd has a huge impact, and I think the Strohs got lucky. They've been a great crowd so far throughout the playoffs. Very yeah, nice people, great. just yeah. for what it's worth. All right. So this week, six uh, three we Astros expecting. tonight. Six three. We are expecting to hear from one of the women making allegations against former Spur Josh Primo. Yeah, and this is according to multiple uh, websites, AL.com, the Associated Press. So attorney, attorney high-powered attorney Tony Busby is actually going to hold a press conference in Houston this Thursday. And if his name sounds familiar, it's because he's the same attorney who represented the 25 women in civil lawsuits against former Texans quarterback, now Cleveland Browns quarterback, Deshaun Watson, who, of course, was accused of sexual mis misconduct during massages. All right, so obviously this is an evolving situation, but Busby confirming just yesterday he does resent, uh, represent Dr. Hillary Calthen. She's a former consulting psychologist for the Spurs. That's right. Dr. Calthen is one of the women accusing Primo of exposing himself. And this past Friday, the Spurs issued this stunning announcement when they said that they were basically waving, cutting Josh Primo. And they weren't the only ones to release a statement. Primo issuing his own statement where he told us, quote, I've been seeking help to deal with previous trauma I suffered and will now take this time to focus on my mental health treatment more fully. Now, the Spurs head coach, Greg Popovich, asked before Sunday's game against Minnesota, what did the team know and when did they know it? I think, you know, under the circumstances, I think it's uh, inappropriate for me to say anything beyond what we've already uh, put out, you know, for our statement. And according to multiple reports, uh, Dr. Calton will make a statement and take questions at the press conference this Thursday in Houston. That's right. We're obviously Pro going to be following the story. Powered Powered by Davis Law Firm. All right, now to the newest team in San Antonio. Here we go. Your the San Brahma Antonio Bulls. Brahmas. And I want to give a huge <laughs> shout out to Mark Austin for pointing this out yesterday. Yep. There's a bee in the yep. horn. Well, now Ooh. it's gone. But there you go. Uh, it's very exciting. Uh, newest professional football franchise in the rebooted 
XFL. Yeah, and so a lot of back and forth on the name. Your thoughts? Max. You know what? I will support any professional football oh, team oh that comes to San Antonio. So yeah. the swag is now available. I got to get me a, a Brahma t-shirt, maybe a jersey. And so the reason they went with Brahmas is no, because... No, you didn't respond to, to the name. No. <laughs> uh, is to signify the grit of the city of San Antonio and also the history with Cowboys and Vaqueros mm. here as well. So there's going to be other teams in the XFL from Texas. That includes Arlington and Houston. All right, and those are the Renegades and the Houston Roughnecks? Yep, Roughnecks. All right. So there we go. So the league brought by actor Dwayne The Rock Johnson along with Redbird Capital. $15 million, and they believe third time's a charm. Here it is. Ooh, the Brahmas. Yeah, yeah. The Brahmas. San Antonio Brahmas. I'm kind of used to these colors. My favorite colors, actually. It's like the first day of school, huh? You lay out all your gear. What you gonna rock at school, man? I'm gonna, I'm gonna rock that. I can rock that up underneath that. Man, I'm gonna rock this. This is gonna look nice. Ah, oh, it feels right. I gotta get me a sweatshirt. Yeah, those look nice. It that hoodie right nice. there. Yeah. All right, so one of my favorite parts actually is the XFL is having a draft schedule for next month and training camp is set to start in Arlington. All right. Now and after the bye week, UTSA is getting ready to get back to work this week. They kick off the final four games of their season, and the Roadrunners right now are really, really on a, on a roll here, definitely. <sighs> I mean, look, these final four games, they are make or break for the season, obviously. And I want to give a huge shout out to Frank Harris. He's been killing it. He's right. like player yeah. of the week for the uh, Conference USA every week. So up first, University of Alabama at Birmingham, or of course we know them as UAB. That's right. The Roadrunners have the only undefeated record in the conference right now to go along with their 6-2 and two overall record. UAB is 2-3, and three, so let's go ahead and hear from head coach Jeff Trailer. They're the number one conference leading defense. They have the, the number one runner in the country at running back. They have the number one receiver in the country at yards per catch. They're getting their starting quarterback back this week. They're undefeated at home. They're 27 and three at home. Uh, since 2017, they've been the best team in the conference. A lot of respect for them. Uh, when the season started, y'all asked me who I thought the best team in the conference was. I thought they should have been picked to win it. I still stand by uh, going into UAB. Uh, it's not just an opinion. Uh, it's factual. It's one of the toughest places to play in the country. All right, Coach Trailer with that raspy coach voice right there. <laughs> Love it. All right, kickoff Saturday on the road at UAB at 2.30 for UTSA. And, of course, we got to talk high school football, big game or big game coverage. Friday night, battle of two undefeated teams in District 28-6A, all to decide the title. Yeah, hard to believe that the high school football season wrapping up here. Brandeis is 8-1 overall. They will face Reagan, number 7. Reagan's got a 7-2 record and, of course, 7-0 in district as well. All right, so the Broncos' only loss of the season coming to the hands of the Brennan Bears week 2 of the season. Those Bears, they are ranked second in KSAT 12's top 12. As for the Rattlers, their two losses came against in non-district play against Smithson Valley. That was at the, Kicks, the KSAT Pixing Classic. Remember that game well. And so far, both teams have been playing up pretty well. So it's time to decide the title. Being undefeated right now, going into week 10, you know, we got Reagan in front of us. They're a really good team. They're really big up front. Uh, but we're just going to focus on us, focus on Brandeis football, and hopefully we come out 1-0 at the end of the week. Whoever wins this game wins a district championship, and we wouldn't want it any other way. These are the kind of games you, you know, dream about uh, making big plays in, so we're pretty excited. All right, kickoff at Comalander Stadium set for Friday night at 7 o'clock. Okay, I'm so excited about this next story. I've been telling everyone who will listen to me. <laughs> One more thing to mention, a group of investors <laughs> that includes Graham Weston, yes, Rackspace co-founder, looking to purchase the San Antonio Missions, about $28 million. Mm -hmm. But it's not the price tag that we're so enamored with. It's the possibility of moving the minor league baseball club into a stadium downtown. All of this according to multiple reports, including from the Express News, that says the potential location could be around San Pedro Creek Cultural Park. And obviously, this was a huge point of contention because remember, they had to basically redo right. the stadium yeah. to get it up to stadium. standards. Yeah, Wolf Stadium to get up to AAA, but they went back to AA. But I think they've wanted a AAA stadium there in that downtown area for some time now. So this will be interesting. The missions have been owned by Carl Yorbro. The uh, That family has owned them for a long time. So 
Yes, this will be a one to watch here. It's, and it's a downtown fun. stadium. I think that's the key right there. Absolutely. And we were we had to look up on that yeah. location on a map this morning. It looks like western edge of right. downtown, kind of in the Fox Tech. Yeah, the old Fox yeah. Tech. Oh, yeah. 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 All right, so we'll we'll stay tuned. Be a walk from KSAT. <laughs> Kind of would. It's a healthy walk. <laughs> Mile and a half at the park. or so. Well, yeah. Sarah, you love to get the steps in. It makes sense. I, I know. I'm all for a good walk. A very robust walk. RJ, Max, <laughs> thank you guys. Right Thanks, now, guys. 942, 63 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Up next, you still have chance to win big. The Powerball having no winners Halloween night. How you could make history with Wednesday night's grand prize. We'll tell you about that in just a few moments. This morning, people across the country are saying, show me the money after nobody won the grand prize on Halloween night. Uh, you've still got a chance to match all six numbers. Tomorrow night's drawing uh, during the night beat at 10. Here in Texas, lottery reports two $1 million second prize tickets were sold in Cedar Park and also in Houston. The lotto says Texans spent more than $16 million yesterday on Powerball tickets. So looking ahead, the next drawing is tomorrow night for that massive $1.2 billion jackpot. That will be the fourth largest in U.S. lottery history. The biggest prize ever was $1.586 billion for a Powerball that was won by three ticket holders back in 2016. Justin Horn, do you play? I know, I know you're real kind of has. When it gets this big, do I you can't play? look at him because I know what his answer is going to be. <laughs> Go ahead. I bought like two tickets in my last a lifetime. I, I might. And I might, do you regret those it. tickets? Um, yeah, because I didn't win. Of course I do. <laughs> uh, Hoping for a return on his investment. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I don't know. It, you know, it, your odds actually go down a little bit of winning more money because more people are playing, right? So you, your odds of having to split it go up. You know, if I, I love win. how he's talking himself out of it yeah. in front of us. Right. I mean, we're still going to buy tickets. You yeah. can't win if you don't play, That's true. Justin. That, that, is, that is a true statement. We'll see. Um, yeah, it is a big number. It's a huge he's number. He's not going to play. That's he's, okay, He's Justin. not going to play. It's going to be okay. not going to play. <laughs> Unlike the rainfall, that, that was not a big number last night. We didn't get the rain that we hoped for. We had some showers and storms there along the coast. Uh, still do, and that's still putting down some good rain. So places like Victoria and Bevo have seen some healthy rainfall totals, but Man, we, uh, we, for the most part, missed out. There was some thunder last night. Woke me up. I don't know if it woke you up, but it uh, um, did put down some brief heavy rain, but it added up to about 300, 200 of an inch of rain at the airport. Bevo and Victoria still seeing some good rain here. We're seeing some lightning strikes and some pockets of moderate to heavy rain. As you go south, uh, looks like we actually have a severe thunderstorm warning there for uh, areas near Corpus Christi, so there could be a couple of storms working in there, but this is all well south and east of us and will stay south and east of us as we go throughout the course of the day. It'll continue to move in that direction. And in fact, we are seeing sun now 62 degrees at the airport, 63 Stinson, 61 over at Randolph and a northeasterly wind around five miles per hour. Most of us are in the 60s, still a few 50s, places like New Braunfels and Austin and around Bear County right now, low 60s. And we'll see those temperatures slowly warm up today. It's not going to be a rapid warm up because we will see some clouds around. And you see the swath of rain, by the way, pretty large here, stretching from basically Laredo all the way up to Houston. And this is the corridor where the rain has been at its best and the numbers have been their highest. It just didn't work far enough north for us. Uh, but still, again, some good rain there around Corpus Christi. As we look back off to the west, we go way out west. Pacific Northwest, this is our next system starting to take shape here. Now, this is going to be a dynamic system. It's going to do a lot for uh, a large portion of the country in the sense that I think this is going to be a severe weather maker, not only for potentially us, but up and down the plains. So let's take a look at the forecast here. Noontime, still some showers holding on to our south and east, but by 4 o'clock, by and large, they're moving out. Then we start to see some clearing before clouds move back in tomorrow morning becomes a mostly cloudy day, mostly cloudy to partly cloudy tomorrow. Can't rule out a stray shower, but it's not likely. Then as we get into Thursday morning, we will see some of those showers. There could be some patchy fog in spots. There's enough moisture return for that. And then here comes our next storm system. So by Friday midday, we're starting to see showers and storms take shape across West Texas. And then we get a line that moves through San Antonio, Dallas, Oklahoma City, this whole area will be under the gun for some stronger storms, I think. Now, as we often are, we'll be on the tail end of, uh, of this activity, but it, uh, it is still there and something we need to watch. This is late Friday into early Saturday. Friday night football, we'll need to watch this. This is uh, potentially could be 
uh, interrupting some of those games if it times out this way. As we get closer, we'll be able to nail down the timing a little bit better. And then windy behind the system. Very quickly, we do need to talk about Tropical Storm Lisa out in the Caribbean. It is uh, starting to gain a little bit of strength. Winds are at 45 miles per hour, gusting to 60. It's moving west at 14. It could become a Category 1 hurricane by Wednesday as it moves towards Belize, eventually Guatemala and Mexico, producing some very heavy rain there. This all stays well south of us. Our forecast, 77 tomorrow, 83 Thursday, 83 Friday with some small chances for showers. There is that 40% chance of storms Friday night into Saturday. And don't forget, we fall back on Sunday. It clears out by the weekend, by the way, but we fall back on Sunday. So an extra hour of sleep, guys. Thank you, Justin. Time now, 950, 63 degrees. After the break, a big month is here for Hollywood. Why now might be the best time to go to the movies. This is Delta Launch Control. Go for launch. Three, two, main engine start and lift off. November movie releases lift off with Goodnight Oppie. The documentary about the Mars rover Opportunity is narrated by Angela Bassett and touches down for a limited theatrical run on November 4th, followed by Prime Video on the 23rd. Angela Bassett will be seen and heard on the big screen a week later in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. The follow-up to Marvel Studios' 2018 smash hit lands in theaters November 11th. He's not just a chef, he's a storyteller. Anya Taylor-Joy and Ray Fine star in the dark comedy The Menu, where well-heeled diners receive more than a culinary experience. Dinner is served November 18th. Movies are dreams. Steven Spielberg's semi-autobiographical The Fablemans opens the Thanksgiving holiday weekend as a young man discovers the magic of making movies. The Fablemans arrive in theaters Wednesday, November 23rd. Lock the doors. Stay in your rooms. Everyone is in danger. Daniel Craig is back as Detective Benoit Blanc in Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. The Who Done It debuts in limited release on November 23rd, ahead of its Netflix premiere in December. Making extra popcorn in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. A local exhibit at the Institute of Texan Cultures is taking visitors on a journey back home. Take a look. For the past few weeks, UTSA students have been creating this traditional altar for the Day of the Dead. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, how a UTSA course is diving deep into this tradition. All right, well, now let's look at the forecast. Uh, showers and storms beginning to move away. We'll see temperatures get into the 70s this afternoon, partly to mostly cloudy skies. That'll be the case tomorrow, too. And our next chance of rain, next good chance of rain, shows up Friday night, Saturday morning with 40% chance of storms. And we'll have to watch for a few strong ones mixed in there before it clears out by the weekend. So uh, timing... Friday Night Football, those things we'll have to watch. All right, two things. One, uh, the sun is starting to come out in a few spots. And two, don't forget, Stone Oak Parkway is closed outside 1604 for a section due to some sort of gas leak. We're monitoring the situation. No evacuations, no evacuations. are taking place. Stay safe out there. Have a great Tuesday.